Okay, so for social studies today, we are doing the state North Carolina. So we're going to read some facts about North Carolina. Its nickname is the Tar Heel State. It was the 12th state and was formed in 1789. The capital is Raleigh. The biggest city, though, is Charlotte. The state bird is a cardinal, and the state flower is a flowering dogwood. Let's read about the history. The earliest people to live in what is now North Carolina were hunters and gatherers at least 10,000 years ago. Over the years, many Native American tribes called the area home, including the Cherokee, Woodland, and Mississippian tribes. Europeans first came to North Carolina in the 1500s, and it became the 12th colony in 1789, just after America declared its independence from Great Britain. North Carolina succeeded from the country on May 20, 1861. It was one of 11 states that made up the Confederate States of America fighting against the Union during the Civil War. Why is it called North Carolina? North Carolina got the nickname the Tar Heel State because workers here used to sell tar, pitch, and turpentine from the state's longleaf pine trees to be used in wooden ships. Legend has it that some British soldiers were slowed down when they st stepped in sticky North Carolina tar during the Revolutionary War. So on the left, we have the North Carolina state flag. And on the right, we have the state icons. So we have the state mammal, which is a gray squirrel. The state bird is a cardinal. The state tree is a pine tree. And the state quarter has an airplane on it and says first flight. So let's talk about geography and landforms. So if we're looking at the United States map, this is, in the pink is North Carolina. So to the north we have Virginia, then Maryland and Delaware, and then New Jersey. So North Carolina is south of New Jersey. Okay. North Carolina is south of Virginia, east of Tennessee, north of South Carolina, and west of the Atlantic Ocean. Traveling across North Carolina, visitors can see three unique regions defined by three different landscapes. The Appalachian Mountains, the largest mountain range in the eastern United States, cover the state's western region. Some peaks are more than a mile above sea level. Journey to the middle of the state to find the Piedmont region, high and flat, like a mountain with its top chopped off, this plateau sits between the mountain and coastal plain regions. In this region, rivers flow through waterfalls and over rapids. Keep going east until you hear gulls. The eastern region is called the coastal plain, and its mostly flat land leads to the Atlantic Ocean. Beaches, swamps, and longleaf pines make up the landscape here. Let's talk about wildlife. Here we see a picture of a raccoon in a tree. North Carolina's diverse regions are home to mammals like black bears, coyotes, and raccoons, reptiles like sea turtles, amphibians like salamanders, and birds like ospreys and cardinals, which is the state bird. The state boasts 300 species of trees, including longleaf pine, shortleaf pine, and the American chestnut tree, plus nearly 3,000 types of flowering plants, including the flowering dogwood, which is the state flower, fill the state with lots of color. Some natural resources. Forests cover nearly 60% of North Carolina, making timber a very important nature's resource that helped North Carolina become one of the largest producers of furniture in the country. Other natural resources include fish, meat, clay, and different types of rocks and minerals used in construction. Let's hear some fun stuff about North Carolina. The pirate Blackbeard called North Carolina home and spent time ransacking ships off the coast in the early 1700s. In 1799, a shiny nugget twinkled in North Carolina mountains and became the first gold discovered 
in what is now the United States. Fast forward about a century to see brothers inventors Wilbur and Orville Wright complete the first successful airplane ride in the dunes of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in 1903. That's why the state's license plates and quarters read first in flight and first flight, respectively. Plenty of famous folks were born in North Carolina, too, including jazz pianist, the lioness monk, President James K. Polk, and maybe President Andrew Jackson. He was born on the border of North and South Carolina. You might want to visit the Outer Banks, a group of islands with beaches, state parks, and shipwreck diving sites. One of those islands, Roanoke Island, was home to the first colony of English settlers in the New World. In the late 1500s, the settlers disappeared, and historians are still trying to solve the mystery of the lost colony. So that is done for our reading. I have a video about the Orville bro the Wright brothers who completed the first successful airplane ride. So let's watch it. Boys, I've brought you a new toy. Twist the rubber bands like so and watch what happens. It flies. How does it do that? Let's take it apart and find out. Wilbur and Orville Wright, the legendary inventors of the world's first airplane. How did they become the inventors who changed transportation and the world forever? To find out, let's travel back in time. The late 1800s and early 1900s were an exciting time when inventors were transforming the way people lived and traveled around the world. A journey that once took weeks on horseback took hours by train. A trip across the Atlantic Ocean that had taken months on a sailing vessel took just one week by steamship. But the Wright brothers, who by this time were building and selling bicycles in their own shop, wanted more. They yearned to fly. Highly trained scientists and engineers around the globe were racing to build the world's first airplane. But so far, their efforts had failed dismally. Orville, we know how to build things. We're good at learning, and we work hard. Why not try? So the Wright brothers set out to learn everything they could about flying machines. They even wrote to experts at America's most famous museum, the Smithsonian Institution. My observations have convinced me that human flight is possible. I have some pet theories on the proper construction of a flying machine. In their quest to build an engine-powered airplane, the brothers' first step was to build a flying machine with no engine at all, a glider. The Wright brothers used their experience building and repairing bicycles to test different frames and over 200 designs for their glider's wings. But for a long time, nothing worked. The brothers could not maintain control of their test gliders as they soared through the air. Until one day... Orville, look how the tips of that bird's feathers curve. It keeps the bird steady. That's how birds stay balanced as they fly. We did it! The wing warping worked! The brothers were ecstatic. Their years of work had paid off. Now it was time to build an engine for their plane. And finally, on the windy morning of December 17, 1903, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the Wright Brothers' airplane soared into history. The brothers' amazing invention ushered in a new era in transportation, making the world a much smaller place. And just 66 years after that windy morning at Kitty Hawk, humans journeyed to the moon on another historical flight and took a piece of the Wright Brothers' famous plane with them. Who knows where the Wright Brothers' invention might take us next? So thankfully, the Wright brothers came and figured out how to get an airplane in flight, or else we wouldn't have airplanes today to be able to travel to vacation sites or see family members. So thank God for North Carolina and the Wright brothers. 
That is the end of our social studies lessons for today. I hope you enjoyed it.